So in 1 Samuel 22, David is he's basically starting a long journey of progressing toward the throne. He's been anointed. He's demonstrated his uh, skill as a warrior, his faith in God by killing Goliath. And rather than finding himself after this powerful anointing, moved quickly to the throne, it's 20 years from the time David is anointed to when he gets to the throne in Jerusalem. It's 13 years till he gets to Hebron. Seven more before he gets to Jerusalem. The beginning of this is very difficult because Saul is crazy, insane. Do with that what you want. But rather than do something quickly, God realizes this young man is anointed and gifted. He knows us, right? I mean, he knows it. He's anointed now. I've poured oil and he's prophesied this and he's gifted, and he's strong, and he's full of faith. But he's not ready. So I'm going to do some developing of him and I'm going to let this madman help me. Now God, God, did not, God did not provoke Saul to do the things he did. God used what Saul was doing. Amen. There's a difference. So he says, I'm going to have to use this time to develop this guy and get him ready for the throne because you have to be more than a warrior. Frankly, you have to be more than a worshiper. You have to have a level of wisdom and experience and understanding about a lot of things so I'm going to have to develop this guy into the leader the man I need him to be before I do this so you come to first you know Samuel 22 and and, he, and this process is starting and David finds himself at Adullam the cave of Adullam which became his home for a few years so the guy who's now anointed to be king is living in a cave Being chased by a madman, he is so demonized and so insane that in this chapter, he destroys several priests of God, has them murdered because they helped David. And David, is it... <clears throat> He's writing psalms from a cave. He's like Paul who writes from a prison. And when David writes, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? He's not writing that, he's not writing that in the palace of Jerusalem. He's writing that by candlelight in a dark, damp cave. The Lord is my light. And when he cries out, does not my enemies triumph over me? That wasn't just a sweet song. That was a heart cry. And God, but God started, he's using this. He's, 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 he's using this to work some things in this man. Just like he's using some things now to work some things in the church. And God starts giving him his army. And 400 men join him. Distressed. Depressed. In debt. And bitter. That's David's army. Bitter people who have nothing, they're in debt to other people. 
It's not, not talking about the fact that they're paying off a car. It's talking about the fact in that day that they were indentured. These people, these people were basically bond servants. They, 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 were, they, were, they were in so in debt to other people that they had nothing. And they were bitter of soul and completely distressed. And they joined themselves to this guy in a cave who's supposed to be king. What a motley crew. Yeah. Here's your army, David. So, so can you imagine the mocking spirits that attacked this man? How's that king thing working out for you, David? There's your army over there. Bunch of foul mouth, bitter, deaded, distressed people. Better find some more caves for the 400. So the enemy, when he's mocking us, and Saul does mock him in this ver uh, chapter, I'll get to it in a minute. He's trying to demoralize us. The purpose of these mocking spirits is to discourage and demoralize because when you're, when you're faced with that level of warfare and you're faced with what we're faced right, with right now and when you're faced with what David was faced with and when you're faced with a giant up on a mountain who's controlling the whole region from there, it's really, you, you only really have two choices. You either stir yourself up and learn to encourage yourself in the Lord and say, I'm going to be a man of faith and believe God no matter what it looks like. Or you're going to just look around you and go by what you see and say, I didn't hear from God. That prophet guy is crazy. Wish he'd never come into my life. I was doing fine on the hillside watching sheep. Now I live in a cave being chased by some demonized king. And mocking spirits rise up and say, <laughs> how you like the cave? And so the Lord, so David said, well, you know, Saul, and by, Saul, he's, now I don't think Saul understood the symbolism of this, but I think the demons motivating him did. So Saul, David, he's trying, where do I go? What do I do here? And he, he hears from a prophet, go to Judah, go back to Judah. Well, that's his homeland. That's covenant. That's roots. That's go, go back for us. That, that's go back here. Connect to home. You got to stay connected there. You got to listen to the word of the Lord. You got to, you got to say, well, I don't care what, about all this. What did God say? Amen. Did he say this or not? So he tells him to do that. But where is Saul? And this goes on. Saul is sitting and he's got all of his entourage and he's got his sword and weapons. And you thought I was chasing rabbits a while ago, but I wasn't. He's sitting mocking David under a tamarisk evergreen tree. The very tree, I don't know if it's exact, wouldn't be the exact tree, the very kind of tree, the very thing that Abraham said in Genesis 21 that he planted as a sign of his covenant with God and the faithfulness of God. Satan plants an enemy who is opposed to everything God wants to do in the nation and sits him under our promise, Abraham's promise. That's a mocking spirit. In fact, in a few verses, when Saul tells this foreigner who had no fear of God or love of God and was just an evil man, go kill those priests for helping David. The, the Hebrew verbiage there, and I don't think Saul knew this or understood it at all, but I know the demon, I know Satan did. The word used to say he fell upon the priests of God and slew dozens of them that day. 
That word for fall upon them is paga, the word also for intercession. So what we're supposed to do to dethrone the demons and the giants and take back the land and pioneer Hebron again and extend kingdom territory from Gilgal, paga, intercession. Satan takes the word and says, I will deal with these priests and I will fall upon them and kill them. It's a mocking spirit. And so God tells David through a prophet to go where this priest lived and the priest that helped him, one of the things he did was, maybe some of you know, he gave him some food, but he also gave him a weapon. And the weapon that he gave David was Goliath's sword. So when David took that sword and cut off the head of the giant and left with it, he obviously dropped it off with this priest. And so God's way of dealing with the mockery and encouraging David is to say, David, I need for you to go back to covenant. I need you to go back to the promises. This land is yours. You are anointed. I have raised you up to do this. And he reminds him of his past victories. And David, of course, gets through Adullam and then he makes it to Hebron and then he makes it to Jerusalem and he extends the kingdom into the whole realm, the whole region. 